Today's buyers are a retired couple seeking salvation from the sounds of the city. And our beautiful countryside properties leave them feeling refreshed, both spiritually and physically. You could have your aperitifs in here, move into the dining room, have your dinner, and then move back here for your brandy and cigar. And there are some big decisions to be made. We've got that mixed emotion, mm. you know. You've got to moment. balance it all out, because yes. you don't tend to get many sheep in the middle of the village. That's no. true. Today I'm in Devon, in the South Hams area of the county, and this is the River Dart. Beginning its journey on Dartmoor, it lends its name to many of the places it touches, including Dartington and the port of Dartmouth, where it enters the sea. An easily navigable stretch of waterway for 12 miles inland, it has helped to shape the towns and villages along its course. This beautiful river is just one of the gems this glorious part of the county has to offer. Devon is the third largest county in England, but the seventh most sparsely populated, with Cornwall lying to the west and Somerset and Dorset to the east. We're concentrating our search in the South Hams district of South Devon. It covers an area of 340 square miles, with 60 miles of serene coastline, featuring long beaches and sheltered coves. Pretty settlements include the waterside town of Salcombe, on the banks of Kingsbridge Estuary, ever popular with the sailing community and second homeowners. The region also has its fair share of maritime history. 12th century crusaders set sail from Dartmouth. Fast forward to the 20th century and it was one of the leaving points for the D-Day landings. With beautiful towns and villages, as well as rural scenery to rival anywhere in the UK, it's no wonder that this small part of Devon is so sought after by those wanting a slice of country life. Devon's enduring popularity is certainly reflected in its house prices. The average cost of a detached property here is £305,000, and that's £21,000 above the national average. What's more, the southern half of the county boasts some prime waterfront and is home to the costliest seaside town in the country, Salcombe, where average house prices have even trounced those in London. So what is it about Devon that's so appealing to today's buyers? Let's meet them and find out. Today's couple are Will and Kate, who live in the commuter belt village of Kings Langley in Hertfordshire. They've been married for six years, but unlike their royal namesakes, they met the modern way. I'm divorced. Will is widowed. We actually met online. We met through a, a Christian dating website. We had a long courtship, didn't we, really? We did. About three years? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Until he got fed up with me nagging yeah. at him. Yeah, proposed over so, the Lion King. Yes. Watching the Lion King. Yes. Will was a finance manager for the health service and Kate a school teacher, but having both retired from their public sector jobs, these keen churchgoers are no longer tied to the place where Will has spent most of his life. Kings Langley, it says it's a village, it actually, it's a bit of a sprawl really out of the town of Watford. And it's very busy, the traffic even through the village itself is constant. And the noise and the pollution, uh, it'd be nice to be able to see the stars. But we'd just like a bit more peace, wouldn't mm. we? And the move to Devon is a chance to fulfil a long-held dream. It's a beautiful part of the world, it's got beautiful coastal paths, as well as open countryside, some pretty little villages, as well as uh, one or two bigger towns. It's timeless, isn't it? Timeless. That's a good word. Timeless, mm. yeah. With six children and ten grandchildren between them, they're looking for a home to accommodate the visiting family and are also hoping to properly wind down after an active retirement. For Will, top on the list of hobbies is the garden. I love gardening. I find it de-stresses me. You know, when I'm feeling very stressful, I can plant out a few plants and that's how uh, I'll get calm again. And although they're leaving behind a busy life and good friends, the couple are looking forward to moving into what will be their first main home together. The reality of any move is daunting. I think we want young enough and active enough and we've got the right mindset to make it work for hmm. us. Yeah. So that's what we're going for, the excitement. Hmm. Will and Kate have set their hearts on the South Hams region, so we're focusing our search in this part of the county. And I'm meeting up with them to run over the finer details of the move. 
Well, welcome to South Devon. Why make this move now? Why this particular time? We both retired and our commitments back home in Hertfordshire have reduced, so we, uh, we're free and... Uh, yeah, I think that's and no family living with no. us at the moment. It's so time for an escape yes. and a new yeah, start. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, escape, yeah. Time to go. Well, let's turn our attention to the property that you'd like to find here. What's on the wish list for you both? Uh, we'd like to have room for our family to come and stay with us, because I'm sure they would. We've got lots of children and grandchildren between, between us. So we'd look for, for four bedrooms, ideally. I would particularly enjoy a really nice kitchen. What else, Will? Well, uh, I like open fires, I like log burners, and I like chopping wood and burning wood, so uh, that would be a feature in the lounge, I think I'd like that. And uh, I think uh, we would like, if possible, annex accommodation to rent out. And what about outside space? How much is manageable for you? Not more than about a quarter of an acre, I think. If it was any more than that, it'd have to be something we could rent out. We wouldn't want a project for us to live in, but we wouldn't mind a project to convert for mm. a holiday let mm. if there was space in the budget for it. Mm. What kind of budget are we working with then? Well, we've said 750, but we've said for the right house we'd go up to 800. If it was more than that, we could go a bit above that by selling the little place we had. So up to 800 we can cope with, and uh, maybe even a bit beyond that if need be. Let's not waste any time. Okay. <laughs> With a flexible top budget of £800,000, Will and Kate would like an older property with enough room for the family when they come to stay. Will's after a log burner or open fire and Kate wants a well-designed practical kitchen space. They'd like a separate holiday let or the potential to build one and they could sell their holiday home to find some extra cash for the perfect home. We've lined up a selection of wonderful homes to show our buyers here in South Devon, but they won't know the price of each until the end of our viewings. Our last property, the Mystery House, will challenge our couple on both age and layout. Well, you're moving quite away from where you are currently. How do the family feel about you making this move? Are they supportive? <laughs> They're sort of mixed about it we've got six children between us and most of them have said that we need to do what is right for us and in fact one of our daughters and her husband have um, gone on the internet and um, had a look at what houses are available in this area uh, within our sort of budget and they've printed out some predictions and we've got them in an envelope here i don't know if you can read it it says do not open until after filming and it's well sealed on the back. Oh, that is fantastic. And, and so they are predicting what we might look at. So we, we're so. absolutely going to have to open that at the end of our second yeah, visit. see how close they yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> we're on our way to the hamlet of Dunstan, around a mile from the coast. Nestled in rolling South Ham's farmland, nearby Chillington is the most convenient village for amenities. There's an excellent range of services, including a post office and general store, a hairdresser's, as well as a health centre. It's by far the largest village in the area, and its narrow streets are lined with pretty pastel-painted cottages covered in flowering wisteria. The property I want to show Will and Kate is around a mile away from the village, on a quiet country lane. It consists of two detached buildings arranged around a gravel courtyard, one an L-shaped stone farmhouse, and the other an up-and-running holiday let. So, I brought you to see a very elegant, very pretty yeah. farmhouse that dates back to 1550. Oh, wow. that's got a it's, bit of wow. age, it? It's got some history, this house. Mm. And you will have also noticed another building there to the left. Mm -hmm. That yeah. used to be the dairy. Oh, oh yeah. And that was converted 30 years ago, and it's mm -hmm. a two-bedroomed holiday let. Oh, fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Slash family accommodation. Mm -hmm. yeah. How is it oh. striking you so far? What yeah. about the location? Well, it's quite rural. But it's a beautiful setting. It's lovely. Fantastic looking house. So oh, let's gosh. go and take a look. Oh, okay. smashing. The look of our stone farmhouse clearly appeals to Will and Kate, although I detect some nervousness from one half of our couple about its location. But I know that for Kate, the kitchen is key, and I'm pretty confident the one in this property is on the money. And we come through the entrance hall. Oh, kitchen, Kate. There you go. Mm. You did talk about liking some views while you cook. Mm. I did. Mm. There's a pretty good well, view. Well, that is a pretty good view, isn't it? It is. Beautiful. I could have been making cakes and looking out over that hillside. And actually, there's a lovely flow to this house. So uh -huh. if you follow me, I'll take you through to the next room. Lovely. 
And we come through to mm. a really good size sitting room, Lovely. come dining room. Yeah, it's fantastic. And the depth of the window ledges mm. is amazing. Fantastic really, isn't thickness it? of the walls. You can yeah. you imagine curling up on the sofa with a yeah. book and not feeling that you're in the middle of a... When I'm not out chopping wood, you mean? When you're not out (laughs) chopping wood for the wood burner, certainly. We're going to stay in this part of the house. We're just going to go up the stairs because I want to show you the master bedroom. There are four bedrooms in the main house. Three of these are at the other end of the property and include a ground floor room, which is currently being used as a study. Above that, and accessed by a second staircase, are two further double bedrooms, both in the eaves, and each benefiting from their own separate ensuite bath and shower rooms, useful for the visiting family. And that leaves the bedroom we've set aside for Will and Kate. What a beautiful room. Really light. Sun streaming in. Beautiful. Super room. Lovely. Space. Good size. With an ensuite. Beautifully fitted. Light. Contemporary. Yeah. Mm. And I'd just like to step back, if I could, and just show you mm. the view through the window. Beautiful. Mm. Fancy waking up to that in the morning. Mm. You couldn't want for more, could you, really? Not when you've brought really me my lovely. cup of tea. I could, you know, <laughs> fantastic. To die for. Lovely. lovely. Yeah, you couldn't ask for better than this. And that's mm. perfect room. Well, this is your bedroom taken yes, care of. Yes. But I'm really Absolutely. keen to show you is the holiday annex. So okay. let's head back downstairs and okay. back outside and go and look at the old dairy. OK. Brilliant. A fantastic response to the main house, despite the rural remoteness of the property. I hope our couple will be equally as impressed with the holiday let right across the courtyard. So this is the holiday let. Quite nautical again with the blue canister. Very nice. A good size lounge yeah, and there's a, a second log burner in there. Oh, that's lovely. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. And upstairs there are two really good size bedrooms. I can imagine it's popular for being rented out. Is the location a drawback? I need to get in the car and I need to drive around and just find out exactly where we are. Ironically, I think sort of the mixture of remoteness, which may be remote, but actually it's a beautiful setting. So we've got that mixed emotion, mm. you know. You've got to balance it all out because yes. you don't tend to get many sheep in the middle of the village. That's no, true. That's you don't. true so or out in views. the middle of a village. So yes, I know. We're a it's, contradiction, I know. Yeah, so it may be a compromise that we prepared yeah. to take. Well, let's go look at those fields and okay. those open views and let's just have a chat about the garden and also the land. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Right. The garden is comprised of a sunny patio area and a low-maintenance strip of lawn that overlooks those stunning views. Then across the road, there's also a paddock with a barn a vegetable patch and a greenhouse. In addition to the holiday let with its adjoining carport, there's also a further outbuilding. This consists of garaging for two cars, as well as a two-storey self-contained annex with a kitchen, shower room and an open-plan studio space, creating even more room for children and grandchildren. This is the bit I like. (laughs) So you've had a good look around. We have. Yeah, oh, I've got to go first. What do you think it's on the market for? It's probably... Maybe seven seven five. You will. Well, I'm going to go more than that. I wouldn't be surprised if it's over eight hundred. Okay. Well, you're both off the mark, but will you're only slightly off the mark. Oh. It's on the market with a guide price of seven hundred and ninety-five thousand pounds. Yeah, much. I was going to say seven ninety-five, but I would say that now, wouldn't I? But, <laughs> but uh, I think that's. Good price. It's a lot of, a lot of property. But there is the potential if you didn't want the land to right. sell the, you know, the past of that land off. That includes the land. Yes, that price includes the okay. land. Yeah. Well, that's a good deal. Are you keen to carry on looking and to explore more? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I am. Off you go. Thank okay. You. Thank go you very on. much. <laughs> it's funny. I can't quite get a feel for what's going on here, but my gut instinct is that Will likes it a lot, but Kate has some reservations about the location. Priced at just under £800,000, which is at the top end of their budget, this fabulous stone farmhouse gives our couple everything they ask for. Kate gets her nice kitchen, Will gets his log burner. There are four bedrooms in the main house and a further two in the well-appointed holiday let. The property is surrounded by peaceful countryside and has stunning views. This is such a lovely house. My only concern is it does feel really rural. Kate, I think, has always felt we should be near somewhere where, you know, we can get a paper, a pint of milk, visit the doctors, for example, you know. If it's too countryfied, then I suspect she may have more reservations than I do. I think Will is keen on this. I think he really likes it. He probably likes the rurality of it, I think. And it's unusual, because I'm usually the one that goes with my heart, and Will's the one who goes with his head. He's a sensible one. But I think, at the moment... To me, it feels like we're, we've swapped roles there a little bit. 
This is such a special spot. If Will and Kate aren't interested, I might need to consider a little escape to the country of my own. I found my gin and tonic spot. Fantastic, isn't it? Is it? it is. Have you found yours? Oh, I think there's three, so I need three gin and tonics. <laughs> Lots to think about. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Perched high on the cliffs above the town of Salcombe is the house of eccentric inventor and scientist Otto Overbeck, who lived here in the early 20th century. This Edwardian seaside home contains his collection of curios, natural history specimens and gadgets. But Overbeck was most famous for advocating electrotherapy, a popular medical treatment in the early 1900s. It's a house Will and Kate have visited before on their trips to Devon, but they've never been behind the scenes. So they're meeting long-serving volunteer Malcolm Wesley. As part of the tour, one of the things we show people is Otto Overbeck's rejuvenator. Rejuvenator? What's a rejuvenator? What's that doing? Well, Otto was very much into uh, electrotherapy, and Otto had the theory that our brains are the source of the electrical energy in our body, and as you age, the balance between the positive and negative electricity goes wrong, and that's what causes all your aches and pains and ailments. Oh. And so in order to restore your health, rejuvenate, you um, restore the balance in the brain, and you do that by giving the brain an electric shock. And what he patented is this comb-type device, and the treatment consists of taking the two combs, uh, connecting it to a battery, and I can just show it is connected because we have lots of sparks from it. And then very simply, you just comb it through your hair. You do that for several minutes, and then you swap hands to reverse the polarity, and then you repeat the process. And the electrical energy flows into the brain, and that uh, restores the balance and hence rejuvenates the body. And does it work? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I bought this on eBay a um, few years ago, uh, paid £30 for it. I use it every day and I am just celebrating my 113th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Joking aside, the rejuvenator's success made Otto a wealthy man, enabling him to buy the Salkham house. Like much of Britain's heritage, Overbeck's relies heavily on the work of volunteers to keep the house and its beautifully exotic six-acre garden running. Will and Kate have expressed an interest in helping out when they move to Devon. So a couple are visiting the greenhouse where they're meeting head gardener, Kat Saunders. The gardens here at Overbeck are really beautiful. Um, but I can see some tropical type plants and I'm just wondering how come we've got tropical plants in South Devon? Well actually this part of South Devon's got the most amazing microclimate. You know, it's much warmer and it's much drier than other areas of Devon. Now, Kat, I'm interested in volunteering in the gardens. I think you've got right. six volunteers. Six volunteers in, here, uh, yeah. So, so how could I do that and how would I go about it? And perhaps we could try something this morning, could we? Yeah, I could. Well, now I've got you here, I'm gonna, gonna get you to do something. <laughs> okay, right, yeah, good. Volunteer gardeners help out with a range of duties, from regular weeding to pruning palm trees. Today, Will and Kate are going to help Kat take some cuttings from this aeonium plant. What I'd like you to do is chop off all of these rosettes, okay, and give it about an inch. So if you do that, and I'll prepare some compost. Aeoniums are well suited to the balmy South Hands climate. It originates from the Mediterranean and can tolerate long periods without water by storing it in its thick leaves. Now, you can also chop this into length. So I'm going to give it to you as the okay. gardener. Okay. I want about, oh, about that inches. long. And remember which way is up. They don't root if they go in upside oh, down. Oh, right, OK. Aeoniums do well in containers because their shallow roots grow near the surface of the soil. And the final step is to insert the cuttings into pots containing a mixture of peat-free compost and grit sand. I see. That's it. And that's firm it in. Firm it in. Cuttings should then be left uncovered and kept indoors at a temperature of around 18 degrees in a well-lit place, like a sunny windowsill. Smashing. Yeah. Well, that was lovely. I've really enjoyed that. Can Go I on. That one? Oh, oh, thank you. That's yours. Go on. <laughs> thank you. I should call it cat. <laughs> <laughs> With Will and Kate determined to put down roots of their own in South Devon, it's time to reflect on their Devonshire journey so far. It's the second day of our property search in the South Hams area of Devon, with retirees Will and Kate from Hertfordshire, who have the princely sum of £800,000 to spend. Coming up, I meet the Devon artist whose ornate creations are one serious labour of love. How long would it take to create something like that? It was a thousand hours. A 
thousand hours. That's incredible. And there's a big revelation at the end of our house hunt. Oh, oh my, my word! Oh my word! Now, I sensed a difference of opinion in our couple over the stone farmhouse we showed them yesterday. I could tell Will absolutely loved the position and those stunning views. But for Kate, I think it could have been just too remote. Well, we've got a new day, two new properties to show them. Coming up later is the mystery house. Now, this is going to test out whether they really want a holiday let or not. But first of all, another property with fantastic views set to rival those of yesterday. Let's hope we can have a shared opinion on this one. For our next offering, we're heading to the hamlet of Kingston, close to the beautiful riverside village of Dittisham. Situated on the banks of the River Dart, this sought-after, attractive village has two pubs, one of which plays host to both the post office and local shop. During the Second World War, the river at Dittisham played an important role in providing safe anchorage for the D-Day invasion fleet. Today, it's popular with holidaymakers and also offers a regular ferry trip to the town of Dartmouth, around three miles downstream. The property I'm going to show Will and Kate is less than a mile from the village, set on a quiet country lane with uninterrupted views of the South Hams Hills. So, Will and Kate, this is the property I've really wanted to show you. Quite a stunning setting. It's stunning. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. It's amazing. We've got sheep. Um, we've also got some other friends that I'm, I'll tell you about a little later oh, on. We'll keep that bit oh, of okay. surprise. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was originally a worker's cottage. There's an older part of the house that dates back 150 years. It's been extensively renovated over, the only thing over the last 50 years. Lovely. Oh, it looks so pretty. And it's got that Devon sort hung of slate. 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 Oh, it's hung slate, hung slate is it? Yeah. And looks like there's some serious windows going on that look out over mm. this. And if you're very eagle eyed, you can probably see a second roof just over there beyond the property. Okay. That's because there's an old piggery that's been converted to a very beautiful two bedroomed holiday let, oh. which has been let very successfully. Fantastic. Okay. Wisteria oh. growing up the wall. How beautiful. Yeah. But I think we should go and see if there are any views mm. from those windows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take you back round to the front Lovely. door. Okay. Thank you. Our buyers are clearly impressed with the outlook from this whitewashed hillside property. We're using the entrance the current owners prefer, as it's right next to the parking area. Oh, <laughs> oh my the kitchen. Look. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, the views are okay on this house, I think. Yes, yes, yeah, I you think. Know, just acceptable. <laughs> yeah, plenty so of open space in front of you, that's for sure. Yeah. It's got the social yes. aspect of the kitchen. Yeah, yes, so it has. Nice breakfast bar. Yes. Is that a larder in there? It is. It is oh, a larder. Is it? Are you fond of a larder? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. love a larder. A dream is a larder. <laughs> You're smiling. I am <laughs> smiling. <laughs> Can you imagine yourself cooking a cup of storm in this kitchen? I think I could, actually. I think I could. It's good workspace and it's open as well, which is lovely. But it has a nice sort of country feel to it as well. Do you like the style, Will? Yes, very nice. Countryfied and every woman's dream larder. And some men's well, as well, well, I guess. Sorry, that's very sexy. <laughs> very sexy. And some men's. Absolutely. Let's wander on through. Thank you. Now, before we go and explore that view, that very tempting view, I just want you to duck in here. And this is the main sitting room for the property with oh, that yes. spectacular fireplace. Ah, I get my log burner. Lovely. It is a lovely room, but I think the most spectacular room of the property is the one I'm going to show you next. Okay. So with Kate happy with the larder and Will his log burner, we're weaving our way through a dining room, which leads to the star of the show. <laughs> oh, lovely. Beautiful views. Look at those views. Oh, wow. I don't yeah. think you'd ever leave this room, really, no. would you? Just living here. Almost speechless, really. Mm. It's the kind of view that's good for the soul. Yes, it is, is, isn't it? You could have your aperitifs in here, move into the dining room, have your dinner, and then move back here for your brandy and cigar. And once Will's finished for the evening, there are numerous beds to choose from. Of the four bedrooms, three are on the first floor. They're all doubles, and one is currently being used as a study. There's also a family bathroom, complete with roll-top bath. But I think the bedroom our couple may want to use is below the sunroom, down on the lower ground floor. So great views from mm. the certainly. 
Fantastic, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Cup of tea in bed. Yeah. Very Beautiful. nice. Beautiful. And a door out onto the garden. Yeah. Look at it. And you've got a nice oh, modern, modern en suite. Oh, lovely, yeah. Always important. Mm. What about the size of the bedroom? No, it's fine. It's fine. It's compact. It's not huge, is it? But for heaven's sake, there's a sofa in here. Yeah. So, yes. And you're yet to see the annex, mm. which has got oh. two beautiful, very large double bedrooms. All right. So the main house gets the royal seal of approval from Will and Kate. But before we see the annex, it's time to meet the neighbours. Well, there you go. They're the extra friends I told you about. Oh. They are the owner's <laughs> pet alpacas. <laughs> <laughs> The holiday let is accessed by its own private path and garden and is finished to a very high standard. Oh, sure. We could live in here, Kate. Yeah, I could yeah, work, work as happily in here as I could oh, yeah. in the one in the main house. Yeah, yeah. For a holiday let, it's terrific. Mm. So it lets out at various points in the year from anywhere between £400 to £900 pounds per week. Mm. And you've got this great size kitchen, a good size living room with a cosy log burner. Mm. Two beautiful, large double bedrooms and a really well-equipped family bathroom. Fantastic. Let's take a look at the garden and then you can guess the price. Okay. <laughs> Amounting to one acre, the attractive grounds include a vegetable patch and greenhouse on sloping land overlooking the property. A separate orchard with space for a hammock and a more traditional lawn area lie just outside the master bedroom. Will and Kate wanted a manageable garden and I'm conscious this is more than they asked for. You know what's coming now? I need you to guess the price. I suspect we're looking um, over budget, so I'd probably go at um, 825000 Yeah, I was thinking certainly over budget. A wee bit to 835 perhaps? You're both right. It is over budget. Unfortunately, it's over budget by a little bit more than you've both said. Oh, okay. It was on the market for £895,000. Oh, it, okay. it was reduced um, a month ago and relaunched mm. at £850,000. Right. Okay. okay. However, the owners are open to potentially a slight negotiation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Because I can't read you on this one, either <laughs> of you. I know you love the views, mm. but I don't know if this is just too much of a house for you or not. The house isn't huge. It's not vast. I think the jury's still out. It's, I, I wouldn't discount it. Yeah, but we, we do need to talk about the budget and also this amount of ground. Well, there's lots to think about. Yes. So off you go. Go and explore. Do some thinking and I'll come and catch up with you soon. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over budget by £50,000, the price of our White House with views would mean our buyers possibly selling their second home to cover the cost. Dating from the 19th century, the house has undergone modernisation in recent years and gives our couple spacious family accommodation, a cosy living room, and a sunroom with 180 degree views across the valley. The house and separate up and running holiday let is set within an acre of stunning grounds. This house seems to be all about its view from the back, which is amazing. A beautiful house and the annex is stunning really. I mean the finishing is excellent to say the least, it's, uh, it's first class. One concern really is the outside space. There is actually quite a lot of ground to be maintained, which we don't want to find is a problem for us in the future. Have you seen enough? I think so. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. views, but shame to go. But... Lots to think about. I think mm. there might be a bit of head versus heart going on with yes. this one. Mm. I think there might be. <laughs> <laughs> Our final property is located in the large hamlet of Leadston, just two miles from Kingsbridge, which is one of the South Ham's most popular towns. Situated on its own river estuary, the market town is a magnet for the boating community and tourists. In the 19th century, Kingsbridge was a centre for the tanning and boat building industries. Today, there's a vibrant local art scene and an independent cinema operates from the old town hall. Our mystery house gives our couple a more modern, contemporary feel and layout, but the location gives them the close proximity to all the amenities they want. And here is our mystery house. Yeah. <laughs> it's a large, detached stone property, uh -huh. and dates back a couple of hundred years, and it was originally a little worker's cottage that's obviously been massively yeah. extended okay. over about the last 30 years. I guess the thing for us is that it's going to challenge you in that um, thought that you want a holiday let, because there's no holiday let on this property. Ah, right. OK. What do you think? It doesn't look as old as it seems to pertain to be. I suppose if it's been extended, and I suppose the whitewashed walls 
and I guess the roof sort of looks new, so you know it doesn't have that age to it from immediate impact. But it's a sweet looking little property, so yeah, and a nice, be interesting spot. to see what it looks like inside. Would you like to go and explore? Certainly yeah, would. Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> So the lack of a holiday let doesn't seem to be a huge problem at the moment, but the house itself will have to really appeal to our buyer's taste if it's going to win them over. It's, a, as you can see, a split-level house. Okay. This is what I want to start off with. very intriguing. Open plan. Oh, my yes, word, you oh, wouldn't yeah. expect this from outside. The you wouldn't ceiling, yeah. think of all this space, my word. A lot of space. Quite yeah. modern inside, isn't it? Yes. And it's light, yeah? yeah very nice. your windows. Well, let's just walk across and see the kitchen layout as well. Yeah. See, we haven't had to travel far. No, <laughs> That's no. the benefit of open no, plow. No, Very contemporary as it's set out at the moment. And, uh, and I could work without facing on to the wall. <laughs> it's quite unusual in the sense of the house being so old or parts of it and yet inside it's uh, very modern. If you were looking on the search on your own, would you have been drawn to a contemporary interior like this? I don't think we probably would have, really. No. I'd like to show you the master suite, which is on a separate level, so we've got to go upstairs to it. Okay. okay. Follow me. Right. The house comes with five bedrooms. Three of those are back down on the ground floor and include a large double with two smaller bedrooms. This level also has a family bathroom and a utility room with an airing cupboard. The two remaining bedrooms are back on the upper level. They're accessed via a couple of steps from the living room and feature a guest double with an ensuite as well as the master suite. Nice, bright, airy room with a modern ensuite oh, of yeah. it. Right. Yeah, very nice. It is very light. Yes, plenty of space. Mm -hmm. Yes, good, good size room, yeah. I sense something. I don't know if it's disappointment, but I don't sense a natural enthusiasm for this property from you. You're very astute, aren't you? Yeah, it doesn't, it hasn't hit a chord with me yet. Maybe it's the contemporary nature or maybe it's just hasn't grabbed us, but we haven't seen it all, so... Mm. But the immediate reaction is not, wow, this is a house we must have. OK, well, let, let's head outside. Mm. OK. Thanks. Yeah. Although the house doesn't wow, the grounds here are certainly more manageable for Will, with terraced patio areas leading up to a level lawn garden. Despite the lack of a holiday let, the property does come with an outbuilding, a garage which has been converted into a useful office space. We've had a good look round. Mm -hmm. Now's the price bit. Mm. What do you think it's on the market for? I'm going to go 595, mm. I think. Well, I'll, I'll pitch it down, but I wouldn't <laughs> go that low. I'll go 675, 675,000. Well, that's quite interesting. OK, because you're, you're both under. Oh, really? Yeah. You are, yes. It's not been on the market long and it's gone on for offers in excess of 700,000 mm. pounds. Oh, my word. Mm. OK. I guess it's location. <laughs> Close to Kingsbridge has probably pushed the price up, mm. but I think I'd pitch it down because of the lack of the holiday lit, really. Well, why don't you take a look around, see if you can imagine yourselves in contemporary open plan living. Okay, <laughs> Thank you. we'll go. Under top budget by £100,000, our open plan mystery property leaves money in the pot for Will and Kate to make improvements and even build their own holiday let should they wish, subject to planning permission. The five bedrooms offer plenty of potential for visiting family and the garden is easy to maintain. The location, just a short drive to Kingsbridge, also gives our couple all the services they want right on their doorstep. The situation is uh, perfect and uh, the little hamlet it's in makes it uh, feel un not isolated, so that's good for us. So I guess the position of the house is, is fine. I'm not used to open plan living. I don't think I've ever lived in a house where uh, we've had open plan, not totally. My low price estimate is an indication of the fact that this house is not for me. This house is a fantastic space. I can see that it really works for a family, but we are past that. And our prime concern needs to be a home for us. That's all the properties we have to show you. Oh. Now it's time for us to go and have a chat. Decision time, then, eh? If there's one to be made. <laughs> Devon's diverse and beautiful landscape has long been a source of inspiration to artists. On farmland just outside Exeter is the studio of one of the country's leading architectural sculptors. Geoffrey Preston specialises in making ornamental plaster work. It's an art form which adorns the ceilings and walls of some of Britain's greatest buildings, 
including the Church of St. Martin in the Fields in London's Trafalgar Square. I've come to the studio to meet Geoffrey and find out more about his work. Jeff, could you tell me about this form of decorative plaster work? It goes back to Roman times and probably before. And how did it arrive here in the UK on our shores? It probably already happened with lime plaster decoration in houses, in, um, even in medieval times. And Devon's very rich in plaster work from the Tudor times and Jacobean times. I mean, talking about your work, we're surrounded by some mm. wonderful pieces here, and this piece mm. behind me is stunning. Tell me about that. This was a commission for a house in Ireland, but it's actually a direct copy of a vault in a church in Bavaria. In the 18th century, you know, there was a, uh, an international style, so actually, you know, the, the, the forms in this particular piece, you would see them all over Europe. How long would it take to create something like that? Well, Jenny, my wife, tells me it was a thousand hours. A thousand hours, that's incredible. I'd love to see the process behind creating something as beautiful as that. Would you show me? Yeah, certainly. Come this way. Until the late 18th century, decorative plasterwork was handcrafted directly onto the ceiling using a material called stucco. Today, the most common method of producing plaster ornament is to model in clay first before making a silicon mould and casting in gypsum plaster. Jeffrey's going to take me through some of the processes involved in this art form, in particular making a cast from the mould of a leaf pattern. Well, this is one of the silicon moulds I was talking about. It's actually got a case oh. behind it to keep it rigid. Less likely to bend okay. while we're, we're doing the, uh, the cast, so it'll be accurate. And the cast would be the messy bit? That's going to be messy. <laughs> Should I put yep. this on then? Put an apron on. <laughs> The cast mixture is made from gypsum plaster and a specific quantity of water. So you pick it up with two hands like that and sort of let it fall through your fingers so that it kind of goes in evenly. Is there a limited time yeah. for how long yeah. you've got to work with yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. In terms of the finished product, I've noticed that everything in the studio is this beautiful chalky colour. Is that how it should stay, really? I think so, yeah. It never looked very good when it's actually painted a colour. Do they need to be treated? Because they look incredibly fragile, some of them. No, they don't. They don't need to be treated. Right now, it's just taking the water on board. But very shortly, it's going to begin a, a chemical reaction which is going to create crystals of gypsum, which is ultimately going to give, the, give it that rigidity so rapidly. Why is it whenever you've got hands like this, you get a really itchy nose? <laughs> I've got a really itchy nose. The next step is to start mixing by hand to dissolve the lumps, all the time trying to avoid introducing air into the plaster. Right, we're ready to pour, so let's put the handle over that side. And then if you just pour in one location right in the middle, and let it relatively go. slowly. Right, so don't move around. Yeah. Okay. Right. Before the advent of silicon in the 1980s, artists used a range of materials to make moulds, including lead and gelatin although neither were as flexible and durable as modern-day rubber. Once the plaster is set a little, the overfill is screed off using a straight edge. Slowly or one big fast movement? Um, slowly. In order for the piece to be hung on a wall, a wire hook is embedded in the drying plaster, and it's then left to set. I just try and push it in a bit. An hour or so later, the plaster has fully hardened, so the case and silicon mould can be removed. Shall I turn it over? And, um, yeah. and There's just some weight in it, isn't there? There is. Getting the large pieces out must yeah. be a big... Oh, it's already fallen out. Just take the case. Got that? Yeah, I've got that bit. Great. OK, now wow. you can have the fun job of just pulling off the rubber. This is like taking the best cake ever out of a cake tin. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, goodness me, it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, so good. lovely. Wow. There's a I don't know why I'm surprised. I know, you did sound a bit shocked <laughs> then. <laughs> I would be pleased uh, with that for my first one. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I've got a long way to go to get to your standard, but... Mm, I don't know. I'll give you a job. <laughs> <laughs> with ornamental plaster work very much in vogue, it's amazing to see this 500-year-old tradition still going strong in South Devon. Well, we certainly gave our couple plenty to consider and it's time for me now to discover if any of the houses we showed them could become a home. 
what a glorious two days we've had in South Hams. The sun has been shining for us. We've seen some fantastic properties. And I have a feeling that two are standing out for the two of you. Am I on the right lines? Well, the Stowe Farmhouse, I think, ticked all the boxes. Absolutely stunning. Loved the courtyard, loved the accommodation. Had the ideal holiday let for us as well, as I added. It even gave us an acre pasture or paddock, which we hadn't expected. We want to check out the location, I think, because of proximity to Chillington. We need to just check how easy it is to get in and out of Chillington. I think that was the only thing that actually, if you like, didn't fully tick the box to say, right, we'll sign the contract today. When it came to the White House, that was stunning. I mean, the fittings mm -hmm. and the feature, you know, absolutely outstanding. And the holiday let, well, you could have lived in there quite happily on its own. The views from both were stunning and lovely. So I think we would put that one on the back burner but only because, if need be, we would have to secure the extra funding. It's obviously over budget. We can do that, but it will take a little, a little bit longer to achieve. But I think that's absolutely fantastic news. I'm so thrilled that we've managed to find actually two properties that appeal to you. Mm. So are there, are there any plans for the Stone Farmhouse? Well, we'll certainly check out the area and, and just get that solidified in, in our minds and go back and have a second viewing just to see if it's as good the second time as it was the first, because, you know, it always helps to, to view something twice at least. Absolutely. Now, I, I recall at the start of this process, you had this very large envelope, and inside it were some properties that I think it was your daughter thought we oh. might pluck out for you to look at. Yes, Are you indeed. ready to open it? Yes. yes. Go on. Oh, I think it's we need to do that. Sealed. Sealed. Come on, we're all waiting. Now we have to see whether these predictions are anything like... I'm really intrigued to see if people that know you well have chosen out similar properties. So. Oh, oh my <laughs> word! Oh my word! There we are. Is the one. <laughs> That's it. There we are. They do know you well. <laughs> well, she's got quite emotional. Oh, bless yourself. Who knows? Maybe it's meant to be. Oh, do you mean? You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Oh my word! That's <laughs> And it says with on a big sticky, big orange sticky, our first choice. <laughs> well, the family like it, you know that much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> They're going to come and visit you, okay? <laughs> I think you need to go and get that second viewing book. So. Yeah, I think we might before we go back. <laughs> oh, dearie me. We wish you well with your search and we really hope you find somewhere that makes you very happy down here. Well, thank, thank you, you, Ginny, too, for a fantastic experience for us. Thank yes, you very much. It certainly yes. has. Mm. When we were looking around the stone farmhouse, I got such a strong sense that our couple really liked it, Will in particular. So hopefully, once they've explored the area more, they may have found the perfect home to enjoy those gin and tonics in. Join me next time on Escape to the Country. Will and Kate did return to the stone farmhouse for a second viewing, but in the end, their heads overruled their hearts and they decided it was too remote for them. If you'd like to escape to the country in either England, Wales, Northern Ireland or Scotland and need our help, then please apply online at bbc.co.uk slash be on a show. বড় মাছগুলো হাতে ধরে বড় কাতল বড় রুই এগুলো হাতে ধরে লাক কাপ 
বড় কাতল রুই দেখান হ্যাঁ বড় কাতল রুই দেখান বড় কাতল রুই দেখান এই সাইডটা ফাঁকা করেন এই এই সাইডটা ফাঁকা করেন এই সাইডটা ফাঁকা করেন এই সাইডটা ফাঁকা করেন এই এই খালি গাই এই খালি গাই সাইডটা ফাঁকা রাখেন এই এই লোক তো ফাঁকা রাখেন ফাঁকা রাখেন আমরা বিভিন্ন রকম মাছ দেখতে পাচ্ছি সব রকম মাছ আছে বড় পাঙ্গা